Hey guys, hey guys, hey guys. Wanted to make a video about um, uh, this. Um, so I've been hanging out on HeadFi and I was uh, in one of these threads, uh, Biodynamic T1 3rd Gen, um, analyzing the frequency response of this headphone, uh, which we can do on the grapher here. We just type in the T1 3rd Gen and uh, we, we, you know, we can use any one of these uh, targets are all basically the same damn thing um, same with like this preference you know thing and um, let's just use the Harman mark II target so when we flatten this we can see this is how this headphone measures uh, the t1 third gen it has a huge hole in the presence region um, the treble is rolled off uh, the the mid bass is extremely bloated. The sub bass rolls off. So when you listen to this headphone, you literally hear nothing but like this mid bass, low mid uh, bass area, um, and six kilohertz. You cannot audibly hear these frequencies. You're mainly hearing just this region and a lot of six k peak fatigue. I mean that's that's how this works. And you can get a lot better headphones in this price range, like the Biodynamic DT 1990s. Yeah, they've got that huge 4K cut and 8K peak, but if you put on some Dakoni Velour ear pads. Um, so these two headphones up against each mm -hmm. other, we can see the DT 1990 Pro Dakoni Elite Velours have much more audible upper mid presence region, much better treble extension. Uh, less mid bass bloat and sadly less sub bass and you know you can get much cheaper headphones as well that can completely annihilate this like biodynamic DT 990s oops let's add the T1 back uh, biodynamic DT 990s and then you use them for a while you get worn ear pads so we can see the, the biodynamic DT 990s mm -hmm have much better more audible upper mid presence region more audible treble less mid bass bass bloat and bleeding into the mids at about the same sub bass extension to be honest so there's plenty of headphones out there that are much more transparent sounding and uh you know so you know, we got this going. Careful what you say, or Mr. Graphs will drop in to say they can't sound any good because science. And I started pointing out again, you, you know, you can only hear the, the mid bass and 6K, and you can hear the DT 990s all the way through except the sub bass. Same with the DT 1990 Pro 250 ohm, a little bit of rolled off sub bass, much better. And they just started, uh, you know, bitching and bitching and bitching. And I, you know, see, you're saying what tells me you haven't listened to the headphones. The other frequencies are easily audible without issue. Even at low listening levels, I compared the Sennheiser IE900, which is known for having a huge 4 kilohertz scoop, and showed that the T1 has a bigger scoop in a wider region. So, yeah, it's no good. You know, and, uh, you know, they just kept arguing. Uh, this one guy, um, this option trader, offended himself by basically saying, using measuring instruments, these guys are so anti-measurements and spec sheets, using measurement instruments to as ascertain sound quality of a co component is tantamount to using a bathroom scale and a measuring tape to determine how good looking your girlfriend is so basically you know how much they weigh and you know their their you know body shape and everything yeah you could determine you know if you have a preference target for that i said yeah if you have a target for that then yes and you know then he was like wow Wow, I can't believe he said that. Wow. Like, just a, a, tr trying to offend himself. Um, anyway, they, they just keep going and going and going. And um, 
yeah so the Uh, okay so again like th this community of people like in order to, to be in these communities where you're just buying and using really bad audio equipment um, you have to be ignorant you have to be tone deaf you have to be incompetent I mean, these are the people that kind of sit around. They, they can't handle the truth about how their headphone measures. They are just incompetent, tone deaf, lying to themselves. They can't even handle the measurements. They can't even handle looking at the measurements. They have to deny them so they feel better about the products that they use. It's really sad that, um, you know, that that's how the audio community is. And uh, that's one of the reasons why, again, I like HeadFi because, you know, they allowed me to argue with them. But I do think they're going to, you know, bitch and complain until I get banned or whatever. But it, it, it shows that, you know, I, I had a fair amount of leeway of sitting here arguing with these people who don't believe in frequency response graphs. Um, again, like, they just sit around and say, oh, you know, this... this this amp or this cable or this headphone I bought sounds amazing. And, and if anybody points out that it measures bad or objectively sounds bad, then they just start making all these excuses about the graphs don't matter and they don't tell the whole story and that's not how they perceive it. And, you know, you've got people like, um, I could, um, you know, let me hold on. You know, you got, you got people like the headphone show and crap. Um, you know, peddling that crap that like, um, that again, specs don't matter to people based on, um, yeah. So we are to the here. There are some differences here. Now, let's take a look at an HD800S measured on multiple people. And for this, we have to go to the Hutubs database. And I'll leave the resources in the description of differences between subjects, but we don't know how much of the difference here would also be present in the HRTFs of these listeners as well. Again, people have different shapes to their ears and heads and so on. So what you're seeing here is effectively just multiple HPTFs. Uh, but the question we're interested in is, well, how much is the headphone's behavior itself changing due to the ear it was placed on? Thankfully, these 30 human subjects first had their HRTFs measured and then immediately had the headphones measured with the microphones remaining in the same place, which microphone placement is also another variable here. Um, that's a whole thing, not for this video. But this means that we can do what we typically call diffuse field compensation. We can subtract the HRTF effects from the measurements to isolate the way that the headphone's behavior is shaped by that ear in that circumstance, irrespective of how that ear typically impacts incoming sound. And that leaves us with this. All of these measurements of the HD800S have had... Yeah, see, you know what's funny is before I even knew about all this stuff, I always used diffuse field as like a baseline. Um, so this is diffuse field, and he was talking about the HD800S. This is what I've always done. I've always flatlined diffuse field so that it looks like this, you know. And that's kind of what we're seeing here, that like a huge uh, 6K peak, 8K cut. Their individual HRTFs subtracted from the measurement. So the people whose ears they were measured on, their anatomy effects have been subtracted from this. So to reiterate, we're not seeing differences in human anatomy here, not differences in HRTFs, as we have subtracted all of those differences. Instead, what we're seeing here is solely the headphone transfer functions, or HPTFs, of the HD800S measured on 30 different people, isolated from the HRTF differences their anatomy would typically impart. And while you do see a common trend among the lot of them, the variation above 5 to 6 kilohertz gets pretty damn wide. 
and definitely wide enough to explain why two people might hear a headphone differently. Six kilohertz, it might be something kind of like this result here. This this listener might hear. So if we look here, we got that 6K peak and the, the 9K cut, you know, and we got the 6K peak, the 9K cut. The way that I do. But here's an example of another listener who might literally not hear a peak at all, either because there is no 6 kilohertz peak on their head or because the peak is present in their HRTF and thus perceptually it fits into their brain's expectation of normal. Now, if we were to compensate all of these measurements to the average of all of them to see how widely a single headphone could vary across heads while removing any other differences like this here, phones on the existing ear simulators we currently have, we can see the HPTF variation in practice, and things are pointing in the direction of this phenomenon being highly influential in the reception of these products across listeners. So all I really have to say about HRTF and you know frequency responses is I've always heard microphones and headphones the way that they've always measured on these rigs. Um, so the graphs matter a lot to me. But it, it's wild when, you know, people can say that, again, if we look at, you know, I, I know what a lot of you are saying, well, well, this, you know, We're still this, you know, as being th this, you know, makes graphs pointless. This, this, you know, this is the reason why these people perceive it differently mm -hmm. and they can say whatever they want. But if we look at these, the lines here. It only go if we look at this, you know, it it gets a little bit wild up in here, yeah. But this huge scoop right here, it, it's audible like this to everybody. So you could say, oh well, in the high frequencies and the low frequencies, oh, you know, it's it's a little bit different, you know. But in this entire region, it's the same for everybody. So when we look at the the T one, that huge um scoop here around 2.5k that is well within the range of where everybody should hear that scoop so when people say that like oh i just don't perceive that um you know so whatever makes you feel better about you know hearing nothing but mid bass and six kilohertz so he's like um the dip it like doesn't matter the dip is nowhere near as pronounced in actual listening to my ears there is no void in that region to my ears and it e is e it's easily audible so that he's lying he's straight up lying because of this test it even shows so you know trying to muddy the waters by saying you know measurements don't matter the the mids and the bass are so accurate regardless of your ear and then again the treble you know whatever that's your own problem if you don't hear like the rig i hear like the rig but, you know, luckily, you know, the, the, the upper mids are so screwed up on this thing that, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, what HRTF you have. Um, the Biodynamic DT990s, you know, have that retained a lot better. Um, so, I can flatten to diffuse field. So, anyway, I'll see you guys later. Um... I just wanted to talk about, you know, people that can't handle the truth. Um, I'll see you guys later.